A century of innovation began on day one in the very formation of what is now Virginia Mason Health System. These doctors formed the first group practice in the Pacific Northwest at a time when physicians largely worked alone. That big innovation was actually believing in the multi-specialty group practice model. Uh, that was unheard of in this part of the country and really unheard of across most of America. And so our founders who came from the Mayo Clinic, the University of Virginia, they believed that doctors working together could do better for patients than doctors in their solo offices, which was the norm at the time. Uh, that was the beginning of what we call team medicine that evolved to doctors and nurses. And today, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, everybody on the team plus patients is very much part of uh, what we think of as team medicine. That teamwork bore fruit and began putting this medical center called Virginia Mason on the map. In 1923, it was the first in the Pacific Northwest to use insulin to treat diabetes. A few years later, the first in the state to establish an electrocardiography lab. Advances in general anesthesia, the first deep therapy x-ray machine in Seattle, the innovations kept coming, year after year, decade after decade. I think Virginia Mason has been the first to introduce so many things. I think the good news of the way we've done it in Virginia Mason is we've been early adapters, but we've been careful when we've reintroduced new techniques because that fine balance between maintaining very high levels of moment-to-moment -moment quality and not letting that be affected by the aspect of learning curves for new procedures is a tough match, but I think we've done it very well here at Virginia Mason. In 1949, Virginia Mason was one of the first hospitals in the country to allow fathers in the delivery room. At the time, this was thought risky for the delivering mothers and for those fathers. In 1956, Virginia Mason Research Center was founded which, in the coming years, would accelerate medical breakthroughs. I wasn't there when it was first started over 50 years ago, but I think, you know, the idea that the physicians at Virginia Mason were curious. And, um, you know, when you take care of patients, and a lot of times we don't know how to help them best, having the opportunity to try to ask those questions so that you can have a better answer next time is so important. And so the fact that a research institute was put in place and then I think importantly 32 years ago when it was reimagined as an institute that studied immunogenetics uh, with Jerry Nepom as its director allowed it to really blossom. An advanced hyperbaric treatment facility, the first short-stay surgery program in the region, the first in the area to use electromagnetic imaging and then yet another first in the delivery room. Another great story, especially given um, our reopening of an OB program. It was 40 years ago that our um, midwifery program opened here, and that was the first integrated certified nurse midwifery program um, in the hospital in the Pacific Northwest. So it was breakthrough at that point in time. The 80s saw Virginia Mason introduce the first insulin pump in the region, the first cochlear implant, and researchers here discovered genetic markers that reveal a patient's risk for rheumatoid arthritis and other diseases. So many medical milestones, but innovation at Virginia Mason was happening in all areas, even hiring. I was in the graduate program in health administration at the University of Washington and I had heard that um, if going to work in a hospital might be challenging for a woman uh, because there weren't many women in healthcare administration at that time. But the people I met initially at Virginia Mason, number one, were very welcoming. They, were, they actually had quite a bit of humor, which I appreciated, and a, a focus on what's the best thing for patients, and how do we um, create an organization or run an organization that's doing a great job. So I immediately said I could work here. And 34 years later, I'm still working here. Virginia Mason worked to reflect the community that it served. 
The kindness that I felt from the employees here, the, the way they accepted me here. Because back then it was, uh, there weren't too many blacks working here at Virginia Mason. And I was one of, one of the first for a long time, you know, here. And they embraced me so much here. People of color weren't always afforded the same level of care that my white brothers and sisters were afforded. So now that I see an organization who is known as being the uh, health leader, safety leader, now taking that approach that, you know what, I think we can, if we reach more people by being more diverse, I think it's not only the best practice, but it's the right thing to do. So I think the, the innovative part of that is just doing the right thing. It, it makes sense and it makes you feel better doing the right thing. It also embraced some members of the community when no one else would. In 1992, Virginia Mason was the only hospital to step up and support a skilled nursing facility for people living with AIDS. Bailey Boucher House still does so today. The courage of innovation really comes from Virginia Mason agreeing to take on this project when every other hospital in town refused. So that kind of corporate courage to try something new that no one else had tried before at a lot of risk financially as well as reputation was an amazing thing to do. One of the most prideful things is the Bailey Boucher House. This is very controversial. AIDS management was a tough deal and it took a little selling because doctors were not only afraid of the, exposing their patients to it, but they weren't interested in getting in. But the fact that the clinic and the hospital responded by taking over the Bailey Boucher and doing a marvelous job, that's one of the prideful things. In the 90s, Virginia Mason rolled out the first mobile mammography unit and performed its 1,000th kidney transplant. We were the first in Washington State to use the Da Vinci Robotic Assisted Surgical System for radical prostatectomy and coronary artery bypass surgeries. A robot, who could have imagined that? In 2002, we created the Virginia Mason Production System, an ambitious program to change the way healthcare is delivered, improving safety and quality while reducing waste and cost to take the risk, and it was a big risk, adopt a system that was used in manufacturing automobiles, which seems the furthest thing away from healthcare. But that took decades to really innovate and to put it in place and adopt it to the proper circumstances. So that's the critical linchpin, if you will, and it really is the foundation of Virginia Mason's culture today. To this day, innovation is so celebrated and supported. Annual innovation fairs give team members with a good idea a stage on which to share it. We have what we call moonshine within Virginia Mason Production System, which is um, building things ourselves to solve a problem. Uh, um, in our physical therapy area, they knew that one of the biggest challenges for patients after joint replacement surgery when they left the hospital was getting into a car. And so they built this contraption that we call the therapy car, which allows them to adjust it for the type of car or truck that the person's going to first get into as they leave the facility. And so they saw it as a way to improve care. Innovation continues every day. It's simply what we're all about and what we've always been. I think part of the secret sauce of innovation is really being able to encourage every single member of our team to be able to look at things and figure out how can I make these better, how can I improve these, and to have the support to be able to do that. Well, I'm inspired by having, seeing the sparks in our team members as we can make things better. And I'm really inspired by the opportunity to continually ask ourselves, not settle, continually ask ourselves, how can we make things better? And how can we make things better for our team members and most importantly for our patients every day? Throughout the years, so much has changed. Our uniforms, our buildings, our tools of the trade, and our reach. In 2016, we welcomed a second hospital to our system, Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital, now Virginia Mason Memorial. 
but some things have not changed. Not in 100 years. The spirit of innovation, commitment to quality and safety, and our focus on the patient as the center of everything we do. Happy 100th anniversary, Virginia Mason. Happy 100th centenary anniversary. Happy 100th anniversary, Virginia Mason, yay! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy 100th.